Spin with Brie, episode five. Wow. I cannot believe that I've already been doing this for five weeks. But welcome back. I am Brie. Like the cheese? Gets you to remember my name. Um, in today's episode, I'm hoping to go more in depth in my spinning. Um sort of spinning journey-ish, but I will go through all of my regular whips and um, finished objects and all of that that I've been working on. So yeah, I'll just take a little sip here. Right off the bat, I kind of want to start with a little joke that my six-year-old told me earlier today and when kids tell you jokes you kind of feel like you're obligated to laugh to make them feel better or make them feel good about it but this one I actually laughed it was it was surprisingly funny and I was not expecting it at all so my son tells me hey mom what did the plate say to the other plate and I'm thinking like, oh goodness, uh, I don't know, what did they say? Lunch is on me. I was cracking up. I know that it's like, it is definitely a silly joke, but I thought that it was hilarious at the time. So I just thought I'd impart that little nugget of gold right there from my son. All right, let's jump right in um, to, I think FOs. Finished objects are first. I didn't look up what the pattern was for this, but they're little like fingerless mitts that I actually made a while ago. Um, I made them really fast. I should really figure out what the name of the pattern is. I'll put it in if I find where it was because I did knit these a while ago. Um, but these were really fun. I'm hoping to do a couple more. The only thing is my gauge was like really small. So these are clearly like for children. Um, I might be giving this to my niece. Um, I hope she likes it this year for the winter. Well, there was those. I will try my best to find the pattern and all of that. Not making any promises because I really can't remember what the pattern was and exactly how long ago I made those. But I brought those out because I wanted to show you. Anyway. So for those of you that didn't, haven't seen my previous episode, um, this past weekend, my husband and I went to we flew out to Utah to go house hunting. I can get into that later, more in depth, but I cast on some socks before I left and I brought them with me to knit on the plane and all of that. And they are the, let me get to the first page here. 
Corn is Set Socks by Penrose Knits. Um, she, Laura also has a podcast called The Knitting Pickle. Super funny, great content. Um, if you haven't heard of her, go check her out. She is great. Um, this is one of her first, this is her first um, pattern launch. And I must tell you, for a colorwork sock, I don't knit socks. I don't like knitting socks because they're boring to me. And I always get second sock syndrome. I probably have like three or four just single socks finished and never finish the second one. But colorwork for me is very like, I need to get to the next part. So these blew off my needles so freaking fast. I was really astonished. So when she launched the pattern, I cast it on immediately. I almost got through an entire sock in the first day, but I ended up messing up a lot. So I had to rip back a little bit, but I did finish it. And then I cast on when I was in the, I cast on the, the next one when I was in the airport on our way to Utah and I finished them both. I finished both the heels on, I think Monday morning. And I don't have sock blockers, I'm sorry. But I think they turned out super cute. I have like really, really large feet because I'm 5'10". So my feet are rather large. But, so I literally had to do the entire um, chart for the color work for the foot to get the length of my foot and it might still be a little bit small. But I absolutely love them. They're super cozy because color work gives that, that extra thickness from the floats behind. Loved loved this pattern. I plan on making a lot more. I haven't cast on another pair yet, but I am definitely planning on it because this was so much fun to knit super fast. Like I said, color work for me, it's just like, I have to get to the next section. I have to get to the next section. And I just, I keep going until it's practically done. I will probably post some pictures of me wearing them if they actually fit nicely. We'll see. I think I, I still need to wash them and kind of block them-ish without sock blockers because I don't have those. I Next on my list of things, I need to get sock blockers. I've had them in my Etsy cart. I've had them in my carts from many different websites to get them. And I just, I never seem to press the, like the, okay, yeah, no, I need to get these. Yeah, I need to get them. So when I show off my cute corniset socks, they'll be on sock blockers and they'll be all pretty and nice. Not all like floppy and weird cause the, cause they're shorties and the heel is all like flippity doo. Anyway, finished object, super proud of them. Love how they turned out. I am definitely gonna be making more. That's all of my finished objects currently. Um, I will kind of segue into works in progress now. I am still working on the shawl for my um, best friend for her birthday. That was in July. Yes, I know it's August now. I seem to be slowing down on this project. I started it and I was just like blowing through the section super fast, but now I'm like, it's going a little slow because I keep hopping from different projects. But I did finish one side. 
This is Dreaming in a Field of Wildflowers. And in my show notes, I will have the designer and everything in there so you can look it up. I did finish the one side and I finished the first lace panel on, I guess it would be your right side, my left side. And I've started the garter stitch or the garter rows before I switch to the other lace panels. It's a bit slow going now. I don't know if it's cause I'm bored with the pattern now or what it is, but I'll get into it again. I just, I got super into those socks and now I'm just like, I kind of want to cast on another pair, but then it's going to suck up all my attention. And I have other things that I need to finish. I think that's probably it. It's not necessarily that I'm not enjoying it cause I am, but it's just that need to finish cause they're, it's a gift and I feel like I have to push through it. So I end up being, you know, a little less motivated because it seems like an obligation as opposed to just doing something for fun. Anyway, that's how far I am on that. Um, my other whip that I have going that I worked on a little bit today is the cardigan that I'm making for this certain family member. Um, she probably knows by now, but I'm making the Pip and Pin um, Mama cardigan. And it's a honeycomb brioche cardigan. It has this really nice textured pattern on the back panel, the back panel and the two front panels. And it's worked flat, but you don't have to purl all that much, which is phenomenal. But it makes this really cool honeycomb pattern on the back and the two front panels. But let me tell you, it's like, I don't want to say it's a slog, but it's taking a long time just to get through to the point where I separate for sleeves. Like it's, it's taking a long time. I didn't think it would take this long just to get to the sleeve or separation portion. Um, but yeah, it's taking a while. Let me show you my progress. It won't look like progress since the last time I showed you, but I did switch out the needles. I had it on my Haya Haya Sharps interchangeables. I don't like that cord. It's, it's not too flimsy, but it's like, it has memory in it and it, it doesn't go the way I like. Unlike the Chowgu um, cords, there's literally no memory in them and they will do whatever you want and without having some weird issues and they slide, it slides a lot easier on them, but <laughs> it's on a small cord so you won't be able to see very well. But the first front panel, the sleeve, the back panel, the other sleeve, and the other front panel. I am still kind of astonished about how much more I have to do in terms of increases for the raglan construction to get to the point where I separate for, from the sleeves. I'll get there. It's just, it's very slow going now. I think that once I do separate for the sleeves, I, it will pick up and I'll be, you know, more motivated. But currently I'm like, this is taking a very long time and I'm not enjoying that. Okay. 
So that's what I have for current knitting whips. So on to kind of like my spinning part here. Um, as you can see on the table next to me here, I have my first spinning wheel, which is the Ashford Joy. I named her Cece. I don't know why I named her that. It just, it came to me when I was thinking about naming my wheel and I'm like, oh, Cece. I haven't used this wheel in quite a while since I've been majorly using my Ashford um, e-spinner. And mostly because with an electric wheel, you get more of a consistent yarn, I think. And it's not so dependent upon how fast you treadle or whatever, but I do, if you want a thin, consistent yarn, an electric wheel will really bring up your spinning up a level, which I think is great. But if you're just, you know, learning and, you know, go, getting through the motions of figuring out drafting and what you like, what's comfortable, a regular wheel is great and I mean it's what I started on and I still absolutely love this wheel but I've been doing a lot of production style spinning where I just need to get through a bunch of spinning and make skeins of yarn as opposed to just like enjoying it I do enjoy it but it's just faster with the other one And I don't have a woolly winder, which is this um, flyer attachment that automatically, um, this portion here will go back and forth and feed onto the bobbin very evenly. So you can actually put on more fiber onto your eight ounce bobbin or your jumbo bobbin than what it can actually hold as opposed to moving your little flyer loops to make sure that it um, feeds on evenly. So yeah, this is Cece. Uh, she's very dusty. I think I need to clean her off a little bit. I have a bunch of 3D printed bobbins. My dad has like a million 3D printers. And then he has his 3D printers printing pieces to make more 3D printers. I'm like, I'll ask him to make some bobbins for me. So I have a bunch of those. So I don't have to purchase wood bobbins that tend to get a little bit pricey. So yeah. If anyone has any questions about how I started spinning or what made me jump to directly to a wheel instead of starting with a drop spindle, first off, people that drop spindle have the patience, like amazing amount of patience because that would take forever. I cannot imagine using a drop spindle. I never even started that. I didn't even try to do a drop spindle first. I went straight to this wheel. My mother-in-law found this one. This model actually retails for almost $800 or a little bit over $800. She found it for like 200 bucks like secondhand obviously, but that's a steal for an Ashford wheel. Wow. And then she's like, you know, I tried a little bit. I tried to do the spinning thing. Um, I think I just, I need more brain space to do it. And I just, 
with the alpacas and everything, it's just it's really hard to focus on it. Bree, you should try it. You should try and do it. I'm like, no, I can't do that. That's ridiculous. I can't imagine anyone doing that. And then I finally decided to try it and I rabbit hole that it I just went come so deep into learning or teaching myself from watching YouTube videos and just like kind of feeling my way through it and it's just the more you do it, I probably worked on my wheel from when I started for a minimum of 30 minutes a day for about a month. And I felt like I was producing great yarn by the end. Like I was producing something that I would love to knit with, what I would love to craft with or anything. Something that I was proud of, not lumpy or bumpy or that I mean there are those aesthetics I perf don't like art yarn at all because I feel like it looks messy but you know some people are just they really like that look and they like using it and weaving or tapestries and I don't find that art yarn is very usable it's not very versatile so I prefer use, trying to do a very smooth, consistent yarn um, of any weight. Typically my, my best yarn is one that's very fine. So like a fingering or even lighter than that is when I get the most consistent. So yeah. And I draft in a short forward draw and it's it's very dependent upon how long your staple length of your fiber is but i majorly work with alpaca so it's not a very long staple length and it also depends on the fiber preparation whether it's comb top roving a bat a spinning from the cloud like not processed at all it's there's so many variations that you can do to produce a different kind of yarn. Um, I prefer all of my spinning projects. I prefer to spin from either a roving, which is when all the fibers are like mixed up and not necessarily all aligned not lined up like a comb top which is when they're all lined up and as you're drafting in they're just they just slide next to each other and create a very smooth almost sh very shiny lustrous yarn but it's very dense at the same time it's not very lofty or fluffy or anything like that a roving all the fibers are kind of mixed together like going in little different directions and then as you draft it it kind of strains them out a little bit but it doesn't it still retains that bounce and so when you spin it and then apply it all that air kind of fluffs back into it and then even after when you set it and you like wash it and all that to get the twist to set it becomes it blooms and it gets really like fluffy and lofty and bouncy and some fibers are super good for that and it doesn't matter how you spin it they will get super fluffy and bouncy after you set it but then there's like you know silk ain't gonna do that if you're spinning silk expect it to be dense and very like shiny and lustrous but heavy and there's going to be no bounce to it, no stretch to it. It will just be kind of flat, but not like flat as in not shiny because it's very shiny. <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of word vomiting about it.
everything with spinning because it is a rabbit hole. You'll go down and it's, there's so much content out there for spinning. And if I was to recommend anyone to, that is just starting out spinning and they would love to learn more, I'm planning on doing like more tutorial type spinning videos about how I like prep my fiber and how I like to spin. But if you would like a broader spectrum of learning how to spin different drafting methods, different fiber preparation methods, how to spin for a particular project and all of that, I would definitely recommend the School of Sweet Georgia. I signed up for that. They have so much content and it's all super helpful. I signed up for it last November and it's really brought my spinning and my overall production to crazy heights. Literally after binge watching all of their content on spinning, I entered that little fiber competition from, I think I talked about my first episode, but I also talked about on my second episode. I placed very high in this fiber arts competition for my spinning and I've only been spinning for a year. That's pretty mind blowing to me on how that worked out that I was placed at such a high level when I wasn't even expecting a participation award or anything. I put it in for fun, was blown away with the results of placing first or second in a category. I was just blown away. I thought that was just crazy. So anyway, I highly recommend if you really want to go super in depth and learn a, a lot of information, School of Sweet Georgia is a great opportunity to start and learn a lot more than probably what I could teach you or what other YouTubers could teach you, I think. But I'm still planning on doing more videos, so please feel free to watch what I make as well. Okay, um, that was very uh, long-winded, I think, about spinning. But I'm super, I love spinning, I love doing it. It's super cathartic. It's relaxing to me. It gets me to kind of zone out and not really have to pay attention very much. I don't have to worry about what's going on in my life. It literally puts me into like a trance, I'd want to say. And it lets me breathe easier sometimes because, you know, regular life can be so stressful and ridiculous. So I've just been trying to spend as much as I can, but I've also been like, got to get on these other projects. So very relaxing. I do highly recommend if you are ever curious about spinning and obviously it's a big investment to get a wheel or even an e-spinner. Some, some e-spinners are very reasonably priced, but it's still an investment. You still kind of have to commit to it. If you have a friend or a local yarn store or a local like wheel dealer or whatever, go and test one out and just see how it feels. See if you like it before you put in that money, put in that time 
to really invest in something like this. Because there are those people that sit at a wheel trying to do it and they will say they absolutely hate it and it's too slow. All it's doing is making a single ply for an end, eventually an end result yarn and that's just so much time and effort to put in when even when you're making a project in terms of knitting or weaving or any sort of crafting that you do there's so much time that goes into that so it's i'd say if you are a process person you get contentment from the process spinning is so kind of up your alley if you are a production or end result person and you like those quick knits or quick projects that finish quickly and you get that satisfaction of finishing something, spinning is probably not going to be your thing because it does take a while to get to the end result, but then it's also just a yarn that you then put into a project to finish an object. Okay, yeah. What else, what else do I have? Um, I think that's all of the sort of knitting fiber content that I have right now. I gonna kind of go into personal things that have been happening with me recently with the Utah trip and everything. Don't feel like you have to stay. You can um, move along if you'd like. I do have some recommended podcasts uh, that I really enjoyed recently is needles at the ready with ray and oh my god why am i blanking on his name oh wow this is sad i'll put it below i i swear to god i remember the name Oh my god, this is so good. Needles at the Ready. It's a good podcast for knitting. Then there's also This Nanny Knits. Great. Uh, the Knitting Pickle. Always a favorite. Hive Knits. She just published her third. No fourth episode recently she's amazing Lizzie she's great and um, Wooly Witchcraft with Brogan she has released a pattern she's done a giveaway she's she's doing things and it's it's great to watch and watch her progression and what she's doing what she's making highly recommend her and then i also recommend magna knits she is so entertaining to watch she came over to my podcast from um laura from the knitting pickle recommending mine which i'm still so thankful for and Magda, she commented on one of my episodes and I was just, I reached out to her. She had said that she had a um, channel as well. I reached out to her on Instagram and binge watched all of her episodes that she has. She has eight out so far. She's told me that she's going to be releasing another one soon. And she's so my people which I shouldn't be surprised you know coming from Laura from the knitting pickle if yeah 
no, that Magda is just as entertaining and lovely to watch. Her accent's really cool, by the way. Actually, just watching the one of her um, episodes made me laugh so hard. She she said if any of her friends ask her if she got bored sitting at home during the pandemic, she was gonna punch them in the face because there's not enough time in the day to do all of the things that she'd like to do in terms of her crafting life. And I thought that, that like just rang true for me so much because I, if there was more time in the day, I would be crafting all the time. But you know, I have the full-time job. I have my two kids. I have mommy duties and, you know, wife duties or whatever. And, you know, cleaning the house and, you know, not the house, but the small tiny apartment. And my time to craft is not as much as I would love. So her just saying that was just so funny. I had to rewatch it several times because I just, I kept laughing. It was so true. Anyway, check her out. Magda Knits on YouTube. Her channel is great. She's also Magda Knits on Instagram as well as on Ravelry. But on Ravelry, she has two S's at the end. So Magda Knits S's. Highly recommend her. She's great. Okay, moving to the trip. I want to say that me and my husband went into house hunting thinking that we had a very good idea about what we could afford. And it feels like we were kind of overestimating a little bit on what the options were. So the houses that we looked at, we, you know, absolutely fell in love with. Like, they were all new builds and I was just giddy with the idea of being able to pick my own finishes and paint and all this stuff and really customize the kitchen and everything. But all those add-ons cost a lot of money. And I kept doing more math and figuring out that all these add-ons really ended up being too much on top of the just base price of the house without any sort of upgrades was too much for us to do like a, as in a mortgage and monthly payments. It was a bit crushing. So yesterday I kind of just had my own little pity party. I was crying and feeling sorry for myself, thinking that me and my family would never get out of this apartment and we would never have a better way of life because we can't afford it. And California kind of sucks in terms of small fam or young families trying to get a break and move forward with their lives and just get to a point where you're comfortable. Yeah, so that was kind of a harsh reality that slapped me across the face, I want to say, yesterday. I'm feeling better about it now. It's not out of the cards that we would be able to move and get a house. These houses may be out of the cards because they are a little more on the pricey end and we don't want to go there and get into a situation where we're in the exact same situation we are now where it's paycheck to paycheck you're strapped for cash you're not comfortable you're house poor i don't want that for my family i don't want to have that stress 
But yeah, house hunting in general is so stressful. It's so, you kind of want it just to be like done. Like you find the house, you pick it, it's done. <sighs> Comment below if you tell me your first time house buying experiences, if you've ever bought a house or even your first time moving out, going into a new place, tell me what it was like so I don't feel so like this was, like how is it this hard and how do people do it? Cause I don't wanna feel like I'm the only one with this struggle of making compromises and making sure that we're able to afford what we want to, that what we can afford, but then also getting the things that we need to actually feel comfortable and not just moving just to move to be in a cheaper area or a cheaper place, but still not liking where we live. Let me know. Send me a DM on Instagram or, you know, just comment below on the video. Um, share your woes because I'm definitely feeling the, the stress here. So I've just been kind of spinning and knitting as much as I can to keep my mind not sinking in on it and wallowing. I don't want to wallow about this kind of thing because for me it can very easily get so to the point where I am, I don't want to do anything, I don't want to go anywhere, I don't even want to go to work because what's the point? We're just going to be stuck here anyway and we're always going to be struggling and we're not going to be in a situation where we were in a house and my kids can grow up in a place where they can be themselves and run around and not have to worry about our neighbors below us you know noise complaints because i have two boys and they they don't have space to do anything and I'm always telling them to, you know, quiet down. You can't be running around in here. You can't be jumping. You can't be doing anything without getting some sort of issue with the neighbors. And then all the freaking dogs that just bark because they their owners just leave them on the balcony when they're gone, which is horrible. going a little bit of a rant there but yeah I think that's all I have for this time I feel like that was maybe like 45 minutes um I hope to have even more spinning contact content very soon I I've gotten a lot of new equipment I haven't set up yet clearly and I'm gonna try and like switch around my area to get better quality videos for you guys. And yeah, well, it was very nice catching up with you guys. I know that I had kind of like a word vomity thing, but it helps me <laughs> to vent to someone about the situation. I feel better now. I am not wallowing, trying not to. And trying to be as positive as I can. We, we, well, I will see you all next week. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Felt like I had to put it in there because everyone says it. Even my child says that about random things. It's just like, like and subscribe. Just randomly. He probably watches too much YouTube. 
Okay, yeah. Have a wonderful rest of your day, week, whatever time it is for you. Enjoy your time, and I will see you all next time. Bye!